sit here and make 40 medium frames for our beehives today. At the same time, I'm going to field some questions, comments, or criticisms anybody out there may have. So at any point in time, feel free to comment. As uh, one of my favorite students and one of my most hardest working students, colon Spencer hyphen David hyphen Miller colon space field would say, don't forget the glue. I got the glue, Spencer. I got the glue. Because in this area, I had uh, performed a triple filtration on my honey. And as hard as I tried to wipe all this up, there's still some honey here in places and it gets sticky. And it's just part of the, part of the thing. Yeah, you can see it on here. It got a lot of honey on here. It is what it is. Let me see. I don't know if I can see comments on here or not. Okay, I can. See, I'm using an iPad for this. I'm not, I'm not, I do not like Apple products. I just don't. Never really used Apple products except for the iPad. I'm a droid fella. I know the ins and outs of the droid. So, but I'm using the uh, iPad for the live stream. See how that works out. Got some coffee. Cubano coffee. Cubano cafepe. Cubano cafe. Mucho negro. Cubano Cafe. Cafe Cubano. So, just so you know, we got the all the components of the frames here to show you. The sides, top, bottom. And we get our glue. Put some glue on here. Oh. It's not open enough. We gotta open that a bit more. Glue always seals shut. This is a Leatherman. It's a Leatherman Wave, actually. It's one of the most useful and most prized gifts that my wife has ever gotten me. Ever since she got it for me, I've been carrying it with me almost on a daily basis up until about a year or two ago. I will carry it with me when I'm around the house doing stuff. I rarely carry it out now. Uh, yeah, I might as well go into this. Why not? I think we're far enough into the video where I can go into something I wanted to show everybody real quick. When I go out in public, the tools I carry with me, number one, I carry a, like a passport wallet, but in that passport wallet, it has my CPAS-C treaty. It has a fiction driving license, which I carry as a salvage. 
a passport, which I carry as a salvage. And it also has uh, the business card that Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller sent me back in 2017 when I purchased his book from him. And it has various other, like my business card in there and stuff like that. I carry that in my back pocket if I'm not going any place too serious. Now, if I'm going someplace where I think something serious may happen, I will bring my briefcase with all my ship's papers in it. Live life claim, fate revolution claim, sea pass, sea treaty, domicile claim, grammar tutor claim, port authority claim, on down the line, document contract, court authority claim, grammar auditor claim. I carry all that stuff with me. If I go someplace where I'm, I anticipate I may need them, but most places I don't. Most places just see past sea tree is good enough. And because I'm so familiar with the grammar, it's just it just rolls off my tongue and I never encounter any issues or any problems with any fiction Vasily ever. But that's me. So on to the rest of it. I'm gonna turn this camera a little bit <clears throat> so you can see. So you see this, this I carry here so that I can, this is a, a knife so I can grab it like this and pull it out. So this is a, this is a, this is called the HR1 from the Hard and Ready brand. And this is so sharp, I will not even attempt to touch this blade. I don't use it for anything else ever. But ideally, if I'm using it, I like to use it like this so that I can or like this I always keep the blade away from me and closest to my opponent <laughs> I always that's funny as if I use it all the time which I don't so that's one blade then the next one is this which uh a friend of mine sent me you can see the little butterfly on there. This is an awesome knife. Uh, thank you, Foucault and Joshua. I carry this over here. And then, of course, my Leatherman, which, if I'm going to use it, I would use it like this. I brace it against my palm, and it's more of a stabbing thing. These are all for educational entertainment purposes only. Uh, of course... I've never used them. And these aren't even real, actually, ladies and gentlemen. These are all fake. I'm just showing you what I would do if put in that situation. I have options. I don't carry firearm simply because I feel like that limits your options. If you're in a situation where you're, you're being threatened, physically threatened, I think a gun is a detriment rather than an asset. I think that this is the best asset for me to have because I can just go like this. And now look, I can punch. If someone's trying to grab me, I can mess their arms up. Anybody who gets cut with this is not gonna wanna continue anything. And while they're worried about the cut, I'm pummeling them or choking them, I can grab them and choke them, and this stays in my grip, you see? Or in this hand, closest, depending upon the situation. It's the best asset. Rather than this, you know? I mean, no. And plus, there is more trouble to be had with a gun than with a knife. Once you choose to use the gun, pull it out, it's it's over for somebody and if you don't know how to fight then, then if you brought a gun then that means you probably gave your opponent the gun if you don't know how to physically grapple and things if you don't let me be specific if you do not know how to grapple and you bring a gun and you get in a converse, confrontation you probably just brought the gun for your opponent because they're going to take it away from you especially if they know how to fight so i just wanted to show that that's how I walk around on the daily. And if, you know, I'm not too worried about like 
hiding it or anything. I walk around literally like this every day. Uh, no one really notices it. If I'm concerned about it, I'll just pull my shirt out. And so no one can see it. Pretty simple. Matter of fact, I just walked into... I just walked into a courthouse yesterday. With these knives on me. And... The security at the front door i said hey man you know sorry i uh i forgot to take these off he's like no problem man and i just put them on the desk went in did what i was gonna do came out and he handed it back to me i shook his hand and that was it i feel it's very valuable to cultivate positive performance relationships with vassalese like that they are not the enemy when you start thinking in terms of enemies, friends and neighbors, then that's what you're gonna get. I choose to cultivate cordial relationships with etiquette and respect, honor, grace. Because really, if you can do that with those people, they will help you. Especially when the chips are down. If they like if you cultivate those types of relationships with people in those foreign vessels in dry dock, the Vasilis, the bailiffs, the sheriffs, the cops, whatever, whoever's there, the security, and they get to know you. They get to know your personality. You shake hands with them, you look them in the eye, you know, you have a conversation with them, ask how their day is going, so on and so forth. And you do that over time, months and months. When the time comes where the chips are down and you're actually there for something of substance, they know you. They're not gonna judge you now. They're not gonna think you're some weirdo because they've spoken with you. They've gotten to know you. They know you're intelligent. They know you're peaceful. They know you're neutral. They know you're not there to, to cause shit for anybody. And so they're more likely to, I guess, sort of be on your side, you know? That, that's what I find anyways. Other people's experiences may be different, but that's what I find. It's always best to cultivate friendly relationships. Alex T. The Bay says, a few days ago in Ontario, five million bees fell off the truck and transport on the highway. Oh man, that stinks. That's terrible. I hope, I hope that the boxes broke open and the bees were able to go on their merry way, go about their business uh, of surviving. Because bees are very, very good at surviving without any help from us. Did you know? I didn't know this up until a couple years ago. Did you know that the honeybee is not native to North America. I didn't know that up until a couple years ago. That some people actually consider the honeybee to be an invasive species here. There's a, a YouTuber called the Killer Bee Guy who's out in like Bisbee, Arizona. And you know, he deals with those Africanized killer bees over there, which that's a whole nother story. I have my own personal experiences with them. I lived in Arizona for a number of years and I actually was able to cultivate a tolerable relationship with the Africanized bees down there. I found a way to, to do that. Now, <clears throat> this guy, this killer bee guy on YouTube, he feels that the, that the honeybee is an invasive species and that we should not try to cultivate or keep them here, that we should get rid of them all so that our, you know, the, the pollinators that are native to North America can make a comeback and everything is as it is, you know, should be, rather than having the, 
honeybee here as an invasive species. Now, of course me, I had to open my big mouth. I went over onto his channel and I said, well, isn't that interesting that, uh, you know, these honeybees were brought over from Europe or England and brought over here and now they they're you consider them invasive i says why don't we why don't we play the record the whole way through and uh, let's look at all the european and english invasive species because the honeybee isn't the only invasive species that invaded north america what about the european and, and english settlers what about them they're not native to here why don't we get rid of them too? Of course, what do you think happened? Got blocked. <laughs> For some reason, I guess humans feel they're special. They get special treatment. There's a guy There's a guy that I follow that's been banned from YouTube like too many times to count. And his name is Varg Vickerness. And uh He's a permaculturalist. Culturalist. He lives in uh, France with his wife, and they have they have a very large family, and they're homesteaders. They totally produce all of their own food, let nature take its course, so on and so forth. And his position is much the same as the killer bee guy's position towards honeybees in that this guy over in France feels that people who are native to a certain part of the earth should stay where they are native to and not go somewhere else. Like he feels that Europeans shouldn't go to North America. Native North Americans shouldn't go to Africa. Africans shouldn't go to Antarctica, so on and so forth. Antarcticans shouldn't go to the North Pole, blah, blah, blah. That's how he feels. He feels that that's the way nature intended it. And when you follow the logic, it's, it makes sense. Wherever you are native to is where you will flourish the most. You will have the most advantages. Like if you take somebody who is native to the desert and then put them in a freezing cold North uh, Pole situation, they're not going to do too well. And vice versa so it makes sense what he's saying you know from a logical perspective now I, I don't have a position on it one way or another I could care less but it makes sense is what I'm saying but he keeps getting banned because he says this stuff he speaks out about this stuff just for sharing his opinion now it may not have anything to do may or may not have anything to do with the fact that uh, about 25 years ago or maybe 30 years ago he stabbed a man to death 30 some times and uh, <laughs> he did 21 years in prison for it. <clears throat> I'll close this door once because I have some activity <clears throat> outside. <clears throat> There we go. But yeah, he did like uh, 21 years in prison for stabbing a guy. 
to death. He remains unapologetic about it. And I'm not going to go into the whole story. Suffice it to say, I do have respect for the guy, for what he stood up for. Um, I don't look at those types of things the way most people do. I really don't. Because you, you get people that talk about, uh, you know, of course, murder. Terrible thing. Shouldn't go around murdering people. If you are put in a situation where you have no choice, then that's a different story, isn't it? No one who is the victim of a home invasion should be put on trial for protecting their family by killing the home invaders. No one. Unfortunately, that's the way it is, though. Or a rape victim, for example. A rape victim has to go through all this bullshit. Well, I mean, that's why a lot of people don't report rapes, because of the legal system. And again, that brings us back to the legal system and correct sentence structure and the beauty of correct sentence structure to be able to stop trespass. Because the legal system is BS. It's completely arbitrary as the joke that William S. Burroughs once made where he said, as one judge said to the other, be just. And if you can't be just, be arbitrary. Truer words have never been spoken. People that put their hands, put their fate in the hands of the fiction legal system, get what they get. I don't really have any sympathy for them. I don't. It's their choice to participate with that BS. It's like people come to me and, and, and talk to me about how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I submit my correct sentence structure paperwork? Well, first of all, that's the wrong volition. You don't submit anything. Submission, what is submission? You're giving someone else authority. You're coming in under someone. When you submit paperwork, you are basically bowing and scraping to that system. You're giving that system jurisdiction over you. Just a small thing like that, just a small word like that. Think about it. Psychologically, what's happening there? People don't get it. You just don't get it. Like these common law people, they may have successes here and there with their techniques, but eventually they're going to fail because common law is based in fiction. It's based on language modification. <clears throat> That's the problem. Let's see. Oh, well. Nobody has any questions. Nobody has any comments. No criticisms. <clears throat> A statue right there. I got to fix this. This lights up. It's pretty neat. Another little project, I guess. So people are asking me questions about the next seminar. <clears throat> yes, there will be another seminar. And I feel like the next seminar is going to be, I'm going to show you how to create a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim of the live life. 
Now people may say, well, hey, Jason, didn't you say that you don't believe that people should charge money for a claim of the live life? Yes, I still feel that way. I feel like everyone should have the opportunity <clears throat> to be able to create their own claim of the live life. The workshop that I'm going to do that I have the vi I'm, I'm with the vision of performing isn't so much taking people through to create their own claim of the live life. No, that's not what it is. What it is, is showing, explaining what a live life claim is, why the grammar is so important, why the flag mechanics are so important, why the postal mechanics are so important, and why the banking mechanics are so important, and putting all of that together. <clears throat> because the prerequisite for me for helping anyone do a claim of the live life is that they have closure on the grammar, or at least a rudimentary closure on the grammar. They have to. I've had people email me, Jason, can you please look at my claim of the live life? Will you please be a witness on my claim of the live life? So on and so forth. And then I will write them back. I'd be more than happy to help you with your claim of the live life. Be more than happy to be a witness. But first, you have to certify that you have a balanced knowledge of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, at least in a rudimentary form. And then that usually precipitates them taking the correct sentence structure test that I have. That if you have closure on the grammar like you think you do, then you'll be able to complete that test in 10 minutes. You'll be easily be able to finish that test. So far, no one has been able to do it. So, if you want my help with your claim to the live life, that's the terms and conditions. You got to know the grammar. Because that's for the safety of the vessel, folks. If you don't know the grammar, what use is the live life claim going to be to you? What are you going to use it for? The only way it could be of use to you is if you know someone that has closure on the grammar and can take jurisdiction over your case or whatever you're using it for. That's the only way. <clears throat> and who's gonna do that? <clears throat> That's a pretty hefty proposition there, folks. That's why I try to underscore, I try to highlight how important it is to learn the grammar. But I'll bet all five people, how many people, five people or whatever that are watching this right now, I will bet dollars to donuts that none of you even had a rudimentary closure on the grammar. And that's not a cut towards you. That's just the law of averages as far as this stuff goes, as long as I've been doing it. Very, 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 very few people will learn this. Very few people. <clears throat> but once you do learn it, oh my goodness, the possibilities that open up for you to be a steward of your contracts, to have freedom of navigation. And like anything else, there are growing pains. You can pretty much expect to go through some difficult situations when you're first starting out trying to use this stuff and trying to implement the techniques and everything of navigation with this grammar. You'll run into people that are testing you. They will test you and test you. They'll try to make you mad, try to make you afraid, try to make you submit. Yeah, and that's where you find out what you're made of. Because if you're made of, <clears throat> if you're made of sugar and spice and everything nice, then uh, you might not make it through the other end. All right, 
so then the next workshop I'm going to do is a parse workshop. <clears throat> where I will take you through the exact techniques that I use to parse words, find the earliest nativity meanings of the word particles, how you credential tangible contract versus non-tangible contract, and also how you credential those things in order to create your own dictionary. That will be part of the Parse workshop as well. So that should be a good one. And then after that one, most people's favorite, I'll be going into a syntaxing workshop. Where again, it'll pick up where the Parse workshop left off how you take the tangible, non-tangible contract concepts and apply that to syntaxing through process of elimination. Believe it or not, friends and neighbors, before I came on the scene, there was no consistency in syntaxing. Nobody really knew what they were doing, much less why they were doing it. When you ask someone, why is this, why is the word the an adverb when it comes at the end of the sentence, they would say, well, because it's on Russell's list of adverbs. Like they had no idea why they were doing what they were doing. And by the way, if the word the comes at the end of a sentence, there's no way in hell it's ever going to be an adverb. I'll leave it up to you to figure out why. <clears throat> All right, I see I do have five viewers. If you don't mind, viewers out there, would you please, pretty please, say hi in the chat. Log in and say hello, what's going on, so on and so forth, so that I know you're here. One individual already did comment, and I appreciate that. But I would like everyone else on here to do that as well, simply because it helps with the algorithm, it helps with the feed, and helps the channel. Hello, brother. Will like to. Thank you very much, the no choice man. The no choice man. Question for you. You call me brother. I do appreciate that sentiment. But I'm not sure who you are, what your correct name is. And I'm pretty sure you and I are not blood related. So if you don't mind sharing your correct name, that would be super awesome. The No Choice Man. If you don't want to share your correct name, I do understand that as well. I know some people aren't, aren't, uh, are kind of shy about that sort of thing. But you kind of have me at a disadvantage because I don't know who you are. For the Eugene hyphen Hugh colon Linton. Thank you very much. As a grammar tutor, of course, I offer you a teaching moment here. Your name. The second colon after Hugh, there would be a space after that, and then Linton, and then a period after the N in Linton. So that way, that would be 100% correct sentence structure format for your name. For the Eugene hyphen Hugh of the Linton period. Thank you for sharing that, Eugene. I do appreciate it. If you don't mind me calling you Eugene, you can call me Jason. Thank you very much for sharing that. Much appreciated. Now, if the other viewers would be so kind as to step up to the plate, 
and credential themselves, I would be very much appreciative of that. Eugene, if you don't mind me asking, what is your interest in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar? Like, uh, how long have you been studying it? Have you used it? Are you a live life claimant? Does your live life claim have correct grammar? Oh, that's the other thing I was, I was, uh, I wanted to touch on with the live life claim. People that want a live life claim, but they don't know the grammar, or they don't have closure on the grammar. How are they going to know that their live life claim is correct if they themselves don't know the grammar? That's another reason why I highly recommend learning the grammar before creating your own claim of the live life. Because if you don't know the grammar, how do you know the grammar on your live life claim is correct? There's so many factors that go into this, but they all boil down to one simple fact. Learn the grammar. So Eugene, how long have you been studying this stuff? Out of curiosity, if you don't mind me asking. Me, I started studying in the beginning of the summer of 2017, and I have not stopped since. I, there is not a day gone by that I haven't done something correct sentence structure related. It's a lifestyle for someone like me. Slow going. No, have not filed live life claim. Do not have closer on grammar. Got into it probably earlier this year, but have not been putting in the hours. Been watching your videos when I have time. Wish to stop, trespass, and focus on my own business. Thank you very much for sharing that. I appreciate you sharing those uh, closures with the chat. Uh... I like to use the analogy of the downward escalator. Correct sentence structure is like walking up a down escalator. If you're doing anything except walking forward, you're going backwards. So if you're studying correct sentence structure and you stand still and take a break, you're going backwards. You have to be putting one foot in front of the other on a daily basis. Otherwise you backslide. I've had people take two or three workshops and then take a break. And then when they come back, it's almost as if they have to start new again. They have lost everything and they got to start all over again. That's why I cannot stress enough. This is something you have to do every single day if you're going to get anywhere with it. And for those of you out there who claim that you don't have the time to do it, I call bullshit. You always can make time for 20 minutes or 30 minutes of listening to an MP3 of a David Wynn Miller seminar or taking any video Maybe colon Jason knife and Matthew colon glasses over 800 videos. Choose a few of those or David Wynn Miller, Russell J. Gould. Pre 2016 Russell J. Gould videos. Take those videos, transpose them, transship them into MP3s and listen to them as you're doing the dishes, as you're mowing the yard, as you're at work, whatever you're doing, you can listen to stuff. Technology allows you to do this, so there is no excuse for not studying. 
other than you just don't want to. Wish to stop trespass and focus on my own business. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the own business thing. I'm not going to ask you any specific questions about your business, but I find that a lot of people want to incorporate correct sentence structure concepts into their business. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to use correct sentence structure contracts, you realize that every contract party must have a live life claim. So if you're going to, con say for example, if you're a landlord, landlord, I dislike that term right off the bat. We got to think of a different word other than landlord. That's so fiction, it's, ugh, it's repugnant. So let's say you are the steward of a piece of property and you rent that out to people. And you want to use correct sentence structure in that context. Your tenants, if you want them to use correct sentence structure to contract with you and you want to be 100% correct, they must be live life claimants. Not everybody wants to be a live life claimant. Not everybody, obviously, as you can tell by this channel, not everybody wants to learn the grammar. And you cannot really force anybody to do that. So in order to use correct set and structure contract, the contract parties involved in that contract must be live life claimants. And if there is a contract, then their autograph and thumbprint and live life claim number must be on that contract. Otherwise, it's not correct. Now, of course, you can, you can contract with people using plain English fiction babble because those, those contracts also can use the principles of the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, and the maintenance of the rule of one rule equal. All those things apply to the fiction as well. But what I'm saying specifically is if you want to use correct sentence structure to contract with other live life, everybody must be a live life claimant that's involved in that contract. And you cannot force anyone to be a live life claimant because that's what the fiction does. The fiction forces people to do things against their will. With correct sentence structure, it's all about consent. You want to do it or you don't want to do it. So I hope that helps. And that, and that applies across the board with any business. Now someone may ask, well, how do I create a business? Like a real, like, a, let's see, what, what could be, like a landscaping company or something like that. How do I do that using correct sentence structure? Before I go into that, does anybody else out there have any ideas about how one would do that? Anybody out there have any ideas how one would create A correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contract for a business, like a landscaping company or a construction business. How would you do that? How would you do that and get paid? Does anybody know? Does anybody have any basic conception of how that would be done? Using correct sentence structure. Oh, look, Coral Blade Grotto decided to show their ugly mug. You 
Eugene says, perhaps one would create a trust through CSS, CPSG. Would like to know your stance on tax and conducting business fully in the private. What do you think about private members association? Uh, I think private members association is an adjective, adjective pronoun. And private, the PRI in private is no contract and the vowel in front of a consonant in ass is also no contract. So that's what I think about that. Hold on one moment, please. So speaking about this topic is, uh, <clears throat> is challenging <clears throat> for me simply because I'm addressing people that do not have closure on correct sentence structure and therefore are coming from a fiction mindset, if that makes sense. I'm coming from a different mindset than the viewer because I have closure on the grammar and I use it on a daily basis. And me sharing this type of data with people that don't have closure on the grammar my mind immediately goes to a scenario where, okay, someone's going to listen to what I say. They're going to take it to heart. They're going to go try and do it. And then they're going to fail. They're going to get in trouble. Maybe they're going to get put in jail. Why? Because they heard me say something on YouTube, but they don't have closure on the grammar. So they don't know how to safeguard themselves using correct sentence structure. So that, that's sort of the dilemma here for me. I have to... I want to answer your question, but I have to think about it and express it in terms that I can be sure that you or anybody else listening to this will not go out and get into trouble trying to do it because you don't have closure on the grammar. So that's the challenge for me here. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. Uh... So I'm going to answer your question. I just, I just had to think about it for a moment. <clears throat> I have another device here. I'm trying to see the comments on my phone. Here we go, here we go. Two things, Jason. Having closure in the grammar is the first, knowing what to do with it is another. No, actually, that's there's three things. The learner 1000, whomever you are. The first thing is volition. Volition is the single most important thing as far as creating claims. What is your volition? <clears throat> what's your reason for doing it? And if you have correct volition, everything else is secondary. The second most important thing is grammar, having closure on the grammar and being having such a degree, a level of closure that you can teach it to another contract party, boom, on the spot. Now, the third thing that you said Knowing what to do with it is another. That's neither here nor there because the grammar tech is pure. What you do with it is up to you. What I do with it is up to me. To me, that's, not, that's a non-issue. The issue for me is the safety. The things that I say on this YouTube channel are very carefully measured because I don't want anyone to get into trouble because of something they hear me say, especially because most of you I would say 99.9% .9 of you listening right now do not even possess a rudimentary closure on the grammar. So that's why I have to be very careful with what I say. Oh my goodness. I got to hit the silence on my phone here. Okay. Okay, so to get back to what Eugene was saying, would like to know your stance on tax and conducting business. As Colin David Eiffel Wheeler 
uh, <coughs> colon, David hyphen, win, colon, Miller once said, you have to learn how to pay your taxes with correctness, okay? I think he said that, the paraphrase. Now, as far as I know, taxes are not mandatory. Taxation is by choice. We hear that. I've seen videos on YouTube of attorneys questioning uh, employees of the IRS, asking them to identify where does it say in any rule book or law book, where does it say that it is a law that you must pay taxes if you are a citizen in the past tense United States? And no IRS employee can point to a specific rule or law or anything in any book that says that. However, if you don't pay taxes, you stop paying them, what do you think is going to happen? Because, friends and neighbors, when you start messing with money, they will come after you. They will. And they have the bigger guns and clubs. So what Colin David Ivan Colin Miller was saying when he said, learn to pay your taxes with correctness, he means using correct sentence structure to stop what you perceive as a trespass upon you as far as taxes go. If you feel you're being trespassed upon by a tax collecting entity, then you can create a document contract postal vessel court venue and set your terms and conditions and see what happens. But again, I'm not going to go into too much of that because if you don't have closure on the grammar, how are you going to do this anyways? How are you even going to have a leg to stand on? You're not. So my position on tax and conducting business fully in the private, I do conduct my business fully in the private as far as my workshops go. I've been conducting workshops since February of 2018, and never once has there ever been any third party involved in any donational gifting transaction, transshipment. Never. It's all been in the confidential. Now, as far as YouTube goes, you may know or you may not know that I monetize this channel. This is a fiction platform. Therefore, yes, the fiction is involved. And the fiction always wants their piece of the pie. This is not my platform. This is YouTube's platform. I'm a guest here. So therefore, I have to agree to their terms and conditions. I can't walk into somebody's house and tell them how to run their household. That's just goofy. And that's one thing I think that people just don't get. People that use social media sites. If you didn't create the social media site, if it is not yours, then you have no business trying to tell Facebook how to run their site or what they allow or don't allow. You have no position to do so. Now, you can create your own social media site and do whatever you want with it, but you can't tell another, you can't tell someone how to run their house. That's a trespass. You're the trespasser in that sense. So what I'm getting at here is this YouTube channel is in the public, and I'm a guest here, and I agree to their terms and conditions, and so therefore, whatever... Um, value that comes in through YouTube, the tax entity does get a cut of that. That's just part of the deal. If I created my own video platform similar to YouTube and was publishing videos on it and so on and so forth, in that respect, then there's no way that they could tax it. But because this is not my platform, it's YouTube's platform, I don't have any say in it. I have to agree to it or just not use it. 
So I think that answers Eugene's question right there. I will also add that back in 2018, late 2017, early 2018, I did have a case with a state tax entity. And I was successful with it in that they were trying to collect penalties and interest in addition to the tax that they said I owed. So I wrote back a document contract postal vessel court venue to the best of my knowledge at the time, which was nowhere near what it is now. Matter of fact, I didn't even know how to syntax back then very well. And I wrote back and basically said, I don't ever remember agreeing to penalties or fees, which amounted to way more than what the actual tax bill was. I said, I have no contract for that. If you do, please show it to me and show me where I agreed to pay any penalties or fees. Show me where I agreed to that, where I consented to that. And then I think I sent them a check for, for a couple bucks. And I said, I want to contribute to the state of blah, 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 because I know the roads need fixed. I know the water and the lines need, you know, the workers that do the maintenance on the water lines, the, electri the electrical grid, so on and so forth. I know they need paid. I know that we need uh, public safety officers to protect us from murderers and to put rapists in jail and pedophiles and drug dealers and so on and so forth. So I do want to contribute to that. So here, here's my offering for that. But as far as these penalties and fees and interest, hmm. and they sent me back a letter like within 72 hours saying, thank you very much. We're square. We're done. And I never heard from them again. And that was probably the single most impressive event that happened to me that showed me that this stuff works with correct volition. So that's my position on, on all that there, Eugene. Hope that answers. The Learner 1000. Would you please share your correct name? so that I know who you are. Because you do have me at a disadvantage here. You know who I am, you know my correct name. I have no idea who you are. And I do apologize, friends and neighbors, for those of you who feel that I should know who you are, that I should remember your YouTube nom de guerre and your correct name and connect those things. I get a lot of emails, folks. I talk to a lot of people and I'm old, man. I've been on, on this earth for 51 plus years. My memory ain't what it used to be. So I do appreciate those of you who credential yourselves, who share your correct name, rather than expect me to navigate communicating with you with your nom de guerre. I just like to put a correct name to who I'm speaking with. And again, as I said before, I do understand if you don't want to share that. It's uh, completely understandable. Some people are shy. They just don't want to come out into the light in the public. Yada, yada, yada. I know that when I first started doing it, I was nervous as hell, man. I was like, oh, man, they're going to come and get me because they know who I am. They're going to come and get me. They're going to gang stalk me. But, of course, none of that ever happened. I would. Oh, man. I would love to see someone try and gang stalk me. Is the Learner 1000 still here? And if so, would they share their correct name, please?
I'm so technologically challenged, it's not even funny, bro. Good morning, Jason. Best greetings from Mexico. Colon Stefan, colon space Hini. Hope I pronounced that right. Buenos dias, amigo. Bienvenido. Bienvenido. Do you have any questions, Stefan? Got a pretty decent conversation going here. Just working my way through creating 40 medium sized frames for our bees. My wife and I are stewards of bees, as many of you know. Muchas gracias por, oh, I can't read that, por todo de que haces aquí en este canal. You have just reached the limitations of my Espanol. Looks like much thank you. Uh, here. What is canal? I don't know what canal is. Sorry about that, Stefan. Paquito Espanol. I used to know a lot more when I lived in Arizona. I could actually carry on a conversation. But since moving, moving to Michigan, I don't ever use it. So therefore, I've lost a lot of it. So if you don't mind translating that into plain, simple English, very much appreciate it. Looks like the Learner 1000 has vanished from the vessel. Thanks a lot for all you do here on a YouTube vessel. <laughs> De nada, amigo. I'll tell you, when I lived in Arizona, and I was working, I was working 80 hours, 70 to 80 hours a week on a huge private golf resort, which has, at the time it had six 18 hole golf courses, as well as a spa and a horse riding property and walking trails and so on and so forth. It was in North Scottsdale, uh, just east of Carefree, Cave Creek. When I worked there, uh, I became friends with uh, a couple Mexicans that 
told me some crazy stories about them trying to cross the border. And I don't know what anybody's position is on immigration, nor do I really care what your position is on immigration. Suffice it to say that I have great empathy for those individuals that are trying to make a better life for their families. And the stories that they told me of crossing the border and failing, the things that they had to go through, that they had to suffer through to cross, are just amazing to me, those stories. Someone should make a YouTube channel to document and compile those stories. Maybe I might do it if I had the now space, which I don't. I'm pretty busy just teaching workshops, creating content for YouTube, and trying to put together the next seminar. From Argentina, salud. Grazie. getting a little bit tired here. I might have to start using my left. Ow. I think I will start using my left. By the way, folks, I am not ambidextrous. I just cultivate that, and I've always cultivated that ever since... I was a teenager, when I would shovel or do physical labor, I would always change hands, do things right-handed for a while, do things left-handed for a while, so that I can do those things. Like when I would uh, do martial arts and boxing, I would switch up my stances, everything I did with the left, I would do with the right, to try and create a balance there. It's always good to have balance. You know, one thing, I will tell you this. This is a, a kind of a funny thing. If you look at uh, older men, like in their 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and you look at them from behind and you look at their, their arms, you will see that if they are right-handed, their right arm will be much thicker and bigger than their left arm. Their left arm will be smaller uh, muscle mass wise than their right arm. And that always freaked me out when I was a teenager. I said, I'm not gonna end up like that. I'm gonna use my left and right so that they, I don't look like, you know, have that imbalance there. <laughs> and I did. So as you can see, I can use, I can hammer with my left as well as my right. It's definitely something you have to practice though. Just like the grammar, you gotta practice the grammar. Anybody out there have any questions, grammar questions, question about live life claim, fate writ volition claim? How many people out there know what a fate writ volition claim is? 
I bet not too many. Does anybody out there know who created the fate rip volition claim concept? I just got to know all this grammar last week. And by that, I think you mean that you just, you personally discovered the grammar last week. I don't think that you, I don't think that you think you know the grammar. It took me 2000 hours before I could even use the grammar. And I'm going on about, oh, I'm all, well over 30,000 hours probably by now of study and performance of using this grammar. It is a huge commitment. And I honor and respect anybody who actually commits to learning it. So if you want to learn this grammar, of course, there are over 800 videos on this YouTube channel, the YouTube channel that you're on right now. There are eight, over 800 videos, grammar videos that I created. I spent thousands of hours of recording, editing, and publishing them on this YouTube channel for people such as yourself so that you can learn the grammar all by yourself. And you don't need a tutor to get a basic rudimentary closure on the grammar. However, to get closure, full closure on the grammar, you will need a tutor. So if you wanna bypass all that and you wanna fast track your learning, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a correct sentence structure workshop. Now, if you have any questions about that, again, send me a confidential email, include your correct name, I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult and we can talk about whatever you want to talk about as far as the grammar goes and the workshops go. But that's for serious people only. Good morning from Mr. Riz. Hope you're having a good morning on the road listening. What's up, full colon Andrew? Appreciate your viewership, man, and your brotherhood. And remember, my friend, that gift is there whenever you want to collect on it. Let me know. That's a perpetual gift. Anytime you're ready to sit down and commit to one hour of grammar knowledge cultivation, you let me know, man. I'll set it up. No, I didn't even knew it existed. A friend is learning from you from this channel. I will not bother you until I get to know how to write correctly. I have to start, but my heart knew this is too important. Sorry for my English. Oh, there is no bother here. Don't worry about bothering me. There is no such thing as bother. For me, there is no such thing as wasted time. A lot of people say, I don't want to waste your time. Well, that's an assumption on your part. It's an assumption to say that you think you're bothering me. That's you projecting, from my perception, that's you projecting an assumption onto me. I don't get bothered very easily and I certainly don't participate with the concept of wasted time. Everything is a learning curve for me. Everything is a learning process. And quite honestly, you know, doing this since February, 2018, I have found speaking to all the people I've ever spoken to all over earth, hundreds and hundreds of people, which by the way, I have all of their names and notes about them 
in a file, I keep meticulous notes. I have found that someone that says they don't want to waste my time, they want to learn a little bit more first before applying for the workshop, that usually means they just don't want to do the workshop. That's just them trying to justify it. If you want to learn it, you're going to learn it. You'll contact me. We'll move forward. We'll do the workshop, blah, blah, blah. If you don't, you'll find excuses as to why you don't want to do it. It's that simple. That's what I've found. Some people think <laughs> that might be a little harsh, but it's not harsh. It's just what I've found to be true over the last six years. If you want to do something, you'll do it. If you don't want to do it, you'll find excuses as to why you're not doing it. You'll try and justify it to yourself as to why you're not doing it. Well, I just don't have the time. Well, I don't want to waste your time. Blah, blah, blah. You either do it or you don't do it. That's the way I look at it. Either which way is fine with me. It's your choice. So any of you 10 viewers on here, if you want to learn this grammar, if you're serious about it, you really want to move forward and actually make progress, contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. <clears throat> Tell me you're interested in applying for the workshop. Please include your full correct name. I will then contact you within 72 hours and I will offer you uh, an appointment. A 10 to 15 minute video consultation. I will provide the venue. This is my vessel, my ship, my rules. Um, I use Zoom exclusively. I've always used Zoom. I don't use anything else. Um, and then I'll schedule that appointment. Uh, it's up to you to figure out the time zones and all that stuff. Cause that, that's a very important thing with regards to correct sentence structure is knowing where you're at in the now space with regards to other people, you always got to know your position. So when people, when I schedule a consultation and people don't show up and they say, oh, I, did, I got the time zones mixed up. Well, that's a huge part of using correct sentence structure, knowing where you are in the now space. If you don't know where you are, how can anybody else know where you are? How can you make any type of claim from any type of solid position if you don't know where you are? And the easiest way to figure out where you are is to just look it up on Google. I'm in Eastern Standard Now Space, i.e. Eastern Standard Time. If you just look up on Google, what is the Eastern Standard Time right now? It will tell you. And then you'll be able to tell, okay, this is the time difference I need to be at the appointment at this time. And then you'll be on time. But it's up to you to figure all that out. <clears throat> I'm a grammar tutor. I'm not a time tutor. <clears throat> so yeah, <clears throat> contact me, tell me you want to do a workshop. I'll set up the consultation. All you got to do is show up. It doesn't cost anything. It just costs your now space. That's it. You can ask me whatever you want during that 10 to 15 minutes. I will do the same and we'll see if this is something that you're prepared to commit to. Because if you are really serious about it and you are prepared to commit to it, I will do everything I can to help you. With the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, of course. So 
if any of you 12 people want to learn the grammar, go ahead, shoot me that email. Include your correct name and apply for a workshop. And we'll see how serious you are. I am building a solid base with the help of your a Plus videos, and I'll do workshops in the future. Well, thank you, Stefan. I appreciate the viewership. I'm glad that you're building a solid base. Would you mind giving us an example of part of that solid base? Could you perhaps give us a little bit of your correct sentence structure knowledge? Could you, uh, let's see. Could you convey using correct sentence structure that the sky is blue? Using correct sentence structure, could you articulate for us, please, that the sky is blue so we can get a sense of your knowledge base? Your solid knowledge base. I've done consultations with people and, and I'll ask them, I'll say, on a scale of one to 10, what do you think your knowledge level is? You know, well, zero to 10, where do you, where do you fall on the knowledge scale? Or from zero to 100%, what percentage of closure do you feel you have on the grammar? And then they'll tell me what they think they know. Like, 50%, 75%, 90%, 25%. And then I will ask them to demonstrate. Like I just asked Stefan here, I said, please share some of your solid knowledge foundation. Translate the sky is blue to correct sentence structure and share it with us. I'll do something like that with them. Because if you know correct sentence structure, or if you're confident in your knowledge, you will be able to do that lickety split on the spot. Bing, bang, boom. And if you don't know it, well, obviously you will not be able to do it lickety split on the spot. For the claim of the color is with the blueness by the please help. Well, the ellipsis there and the dangling hyphen there negates any sort of correct sentence structure that you would have. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. No choice, man. Oh, that's not Stefan though. I asked Stefan to do that. But Eugene chimed in, so that I guess that's cool. Um, well, let's talk about where claims come from, folks. Let's talk about the four positionals. Every correct sentence structure must start with what? A cause. That's the four. And you need two points with which to draw a straight line. Cause, concern, then your verb. For the facts of the facts are. That's the beginning of a correct sentence structure. So think about it. Where, what is the source of your claim? Where's it coming from? And someone would say, well, maybe it's, and, and I really don't understand why people don't do this. And I've said this like ad nauseum over and over. 
One of the best ways for a beginner to start their claim is for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim, using that as a base. But nobody does it. It's really helpful to start with that base. Think about what you're trying to convey, and then whatever you're trying to convey, summing it up in one word, put it after the word claim. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the and then go from there. It's very easy, but yet no one seems to do it. So anyways, let's get back to the claim thing. Where do claims come from? Where's the claim coming from? Where does the claimant's knowledge come from? Where does your knowledge come from? What is the source of your knowledge? Think about that, folks. What is the source of your knowledge? And whatever the source of your knowledge, that's going to be or it could be the cause of your claim. For, of, verb, with, of, with, by. That's the most basic correct sentence structure format. For the color of the sky is with the observation of the vicinity by the witness. So first off, observation as a particle of negation, a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of words. So you did sick it. You did sick it. I appreciate that. But I highly recommend finding a positive performance synonym and only sicking when you actually need to. I would stay away from the sicking if I, if I could. If I would highly recommend do it, staying away from the sicking. Put the work in. Find a positive performance synonym. And the positional sequencing is not correct, Stephen. Stefan, sorry. You would not precede the authority with a concern because when you read that backwards, it becomes for the witness with the vicinity. And that is not correct because every correct sentence structure must be cause concern for the facts of the facts. It's never for the facts with the facts. That is not the mathematical interface. The mathematical interface is one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. For the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. The verb is always followed by a possessive. The authority is always preceded by a possessive. And then there must be a concern sandwiched between those two possessives. Senses are the source of our knowledge. That's only partially true. There's something else to it. You're close but no cigar. There's one element you're missing there. Eugene, you are close. You are very, very close. But still not there. How about this? For the claimant's cognition of the sensation is with the claim. For the claimant's cognition of the sensation or for the claimant's sensation of the cognition. Cognition is the key. It's not enough to sense something. You have to understand those sensations. You have to cognize those sensations. So that's the source of your claim. Your cognition i.e. understanding of those sensations. That's the source. Now you don't have to use that in your claim. I'm just generally speaking that that is where claims come from and you have to have closure on that. And look, nobody in the 10 or 12 or whatever viewers, nobody 
knew that. But now you do. How can you certify what I said? Think about it from a logical perspective. Where else do they come from? One may only make a claim for oneself. So knowing that, how would you articulate to me that the sky is blue? On a side note, over the years I've had students that have come to me from other sectors of the quantum grammar domain. Meaning, they've come to me from the Mark Lowercase K contingent. They've come to me from the colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould contingent. And they want to learn the grammar because they're not learning. They're not getting the closure that they want on the grammar from those other sectors. So they come to me. And what usually happens is, even though they know that they, they're not getting closure over there, that the teachers don't know, don't have closure on what they're sharing other than, well, Russell said so. When I begin teaching and giving closures, they will say, well, that's not the way Russell does it. So the point I'm making here is it's getting caught in a fiction mindset where it's an appeal to an authority. So if they say, well, that's not the way Russell does it, I'll say, okay, so how does Russell do it then? And then they'll tell me, and then I'll say, well, what's your closure on that? Why does he do it that way? Explain it to me. And they'll say, well, well I can't. And I'll be like, well, then why the hell did you bring it up? What's the point? I can explain what I'm doing here. I'm explaining it to you. What else is there? If you cannot, the burden of proof is always on the claimant. If you cannot explain and give closure to your claim, yourself, then you're just participating with opinion. That's it. And if you say, well, Russell said so, then you're appealing to authority. That is a logical fallacy. You get what I'm saying, folks. I had understanding in mind, done write it. Cognition makes sense. Okay, brother, in the grind. All right, thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. So no one can translate the sentence the fiction babble sentence, the sky is blue. No one has any idea how to translate that into correct sentence structure, eh? Oh, kafefe. For this claim is knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the gratitude, with the gift of the Andrew with the sensation by this claimant, period. Thank you very much, bro. I appreciate it. And that, friends and neighbors, is a perfect example of rule one, rule equal. What you put in is what you get out. If you value something, if you value what I'm doing, rule one, rule equal means that you would give value back. That's what I do with my favorite YouTubers. If I get something or learn something from someone, I'll do what Andrew just did. I'll send him a gift, whatever I can give. That's how the cosmos works. You get more when you give more. But I get it. You know, a lot of people, they just want the free stuff. They just doesn't even occur to them to value the gift of correct sentence structure of over 800 videos on this channel. I don't want to start talking like that, you know, but I just wanted to say that that's a great example. Rule one, rule equal. 
and I am very, very <coughs> thankful for that, for the people that participate with Rule 1, Rule Equal, and they cognize what that means. Not only do they cognize it, but they participate with it. They perform on it. The value of a thing is what you put into it. What you put in is what you get out. I can't think of a domain that illustrates that more than correct sentence structure. There are people on this channel that still comment who have never taken workshops, have never donated anything, but they remain on this channel, they ask questions and they've been on here for a couple years and they are no further along in their learning journey than they were a couple years ago when they started. But they don't make the connection. You can take that as you, as you want to. I'm just telling you my personal experience over the last six years of how this stuff works, how life works in general anyways. All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up, folks. Appreciate everybody being here. I really do. I super appreciate Andrew's gift and anyone else who values what I do. The effort and energy it takes. So I will give my correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, translation of the sky is blue. Actually, I'll wait... A little bit longer to see if anybody has any offerings for that sentence. But I have a feeling they don't. For this claim, it's knowledge of the facts is with this witness claim of the sky with the color of the blue with the sensation by this claimant. Well... Never mind. I don't even have to do it because April just did it. Well done. Well done. I stand corrected. There is one individual on this channel that does possess rudimentary closure on the grammar. Congratulations. That's pretty awesome. Well done on that sentence. What a way to round it out, though. That's, that's awesome. I appreciate that. And there you go, folks. There you go. That's what hard work and study gets you. That's what sticking with it gets you and being committed to it. You get a sentence like that. You can just rattle that off. Isn't that awesome? I hope that inspires the other 12 or so viewers out there <clears throat> to really buckle down and study this stuff. Email me. Apply for a workshop, get your toes wet, get in the ring, step up onto the carpet, yada, yada, yada. The now space waits for no one. Thanks everybody. Again, appreciate you being here. What I will do is I will take this video, put it over into the members section, and then I will download the video, edit it, and then make an edited version of it available to the public for study. But if you want to see the unedited version, which I'll probably take out all that knife stuff at the beginning, um, then you would have to become a loyalist contributor member and um, join the membership. All right. Thank you. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, 
contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.